welcome back to Movement Matters, a show designed to bring you the best physical therapy tips and exercises to decrease pain and get you back to doing what you love. I'm your host, Christine Linders, board certified orthopedic physical therapy specialist. For the next few episodes, I'm going to be highlighting local entrepreneurs and business owners to find out what they've been doing to be safe and successful during this pandemic. And of course, I'll be providing instructional information and videos with stretches and exercises to help them and you resolve pain and injury. Today, we're talking with former Chaminade soccer player and owner of Only the Good clothing line, Kevin Anderson. Kevin created Only the Good clothing line early in the pandemic to try to highlight more of the positive for people during this stressful time. Also, Kevin has suffered a long time shoulder injury, so I'll show all the best physical therapy activities to resolve shoulder pain. Welcome, Kevin, and thank you for joining me on Movement Matters. How are you doing today? Good, good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Appreciate so we're having... it. Oh, good. Yeah, I appreciate you coming <laughs> up. So I guess we're having some flash flood warnings today. Did you have anything like that where you are? Yes, it's like pouring right now. Kind of slowed down. We're working out, but in the garage. Oh, yeah. Stay That's safe. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's hard. so. So I'm gonna dive right in. I love the only the good, and I know that for Valentine's Day, I was kind of spreading the love at work, saying we should wear pink or red or something all week yeah. long. And my boss said, "Let's buy some of this." So you gave us these <laughs> awesome. I don't know if everybody could see it. Only the good tops, which I marveled at the o OTG. I wanted to know what that was, and also how incredibly soft they are. How did you come about starting Only the Good? Yeah, so last year during the lockdown and quarantine, I was stuck at home, not working, had a lot of time on my hands. So I thought, why not start this? I had the idea of uh, making a clothing line like for a while now, but I thought since I had so much time on my hands, I thought, why not just start it up? During all the bad that was happening in the world, I decided yeah. I know I want to do like make like a positive outlet mm -hmm. for myself and others I guess I think that's great uh it's one of those yeah. things. looking on LinkedIn yesterday because my brother was doing a talk that was called turning obstacles into opportunities and I thought like yeah. what a great thing that you did mm -hmm. was the obstacle being the pandemic so many people being off work it's an opportunity to work on launching a project that you wanted to work on for a long time and bring such like I'm getting goosebumps inspiration and highlights the good in the bad situation so you you have your shirt on now is that right yep so I noticed the, the, I love that nice. the e is flipped and I like that because the way you have it stacked like that it looks like almost a reflection to me in my mind's eye right uh but yeah, how did yeah. you come up with that the flipped E was just to make it, you know, stand out, make it unique. No, like, deep meaning to it. <laughs> yeah. No, well, yeah. I think it's great. I think it's great. And I know, um, I know I love it. So I have had, like, ideas over the years that I wanted to manufacture something. How do you do this? Like, where do you go? How do you get, like, uh, a person to cut the fabric or you design what the shirt like this is a little bit of a crop top I love it because you can wear something underneath it and that's a long sleeve shirt how do you come up with like the pattern and the manufacturer like I'm fascinated by yeah that. yeah um finding the pieces I have like find other like different manufacturers like multiple and then in terms of like designing I just do it myself I like to keep it like minimal and simplistic yeah. And then printing, I have this um, local printer who lives actually like across the way who like prints his stuff right from his garage. So I just take my box over to him and he prints them for me. Super that's, cool, dude. That's so awesome. What's his name? Can you say? Yeah, his name is John Jewell. If anyone ever needs to get their stuff printed, you should go to him. I think that's fantastic, and you know what? I think I'm gonna I'm gonna write that down. Although I know I can watch this show again. <laughs> I have this big idea that I've had for now. It's six years. I know everybody's sick of me talking about my book, but I want to have suck it in paraphernalia so people can yep. remember. Almost like people can remember to suck it in. Remember? Uh, I don't know if you've seen Forrest Gump. A lot of people have seen Forrest Gump, but not everybody wear 
the smiley face, like they kind of allude to how certain phrases have come over the years. And one of those was like, have a nice day. Yeah, and there yeah, yeah. Was a smiley face on the t-shirt is have a nice day. Yeah, I'm exactly, gonna yeah. Suck it in so that people can remember, oh, that's right, pull my tummy in, or oh, that's right, have a nice day, or oh, that's right, only the good. Let's focus on only the good because the how it makes us us feel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that's great. So how's it been going? When did you actually launch it? Um, I started it in August and I launched my first drop in September, I believe. Oh, wow. So like six months ago, approximately? Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. So how? Still, still fairly new. <laughs> it's new. Yeah. How do, you, um, how do you market it and how do people find out about, you know, how, how to get something like this from you? Do you ship it yourself or do they go on to a, a website? I think I, you told me about a website. Yeah. Well, my main use, or I mainly use uh, Instagram. Okay. And then, yeah, I have a website where you can purchase all the clothing. It's onlythegood.com. Okay, that's good. And cool. then, yeah. What's your Instagram? Instagram is also at onlythegood. Oh, well, that's good enough. Okay, yeah. yeah. Somebody wants to get some, it's uh, shirts and uh, long sleeve shirts. Hoodies, shirts, yeah, hoodies, crew necks. Um, yeah, crop tees, regular tees. Planning to do some sweats too in my okay. next drop. That's good. What are you gonna put? Are you gonna put the heart on there or are you gonna put the uh, only the good? <laughs> um, I think the heart was just for like Valentine's week. Oh, I wow. could though, I could bring it back. We'll see. I like it. I think I like the OTG, like on the in the sweatpants. I think that's pretty cute. I mean, we ladies like that kind of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Most of us. I'm anyway. thinking of like maybe doing like a cloud, I like the meaning behind a cloud, like it means to look up, to always remember that there's clouds, always look that's, up, be positive. That's really, just an idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. So I would like to see that. So um, what else was I going to ask you? Let's talk a little bit about your shoulder and, uh, yeah. and how you, <laughs> I know you're not, you think you're not hundred percent sure how you heard it, but let's talk about your shoulder a little bit and tell everyone where it hurts, when it hurts. <clears throat> yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure the when I heard it, it was maybe two years ago. I went snowboarding and I was like trying to do a jump and I landed straight on my shoulder. Oh. And I already knew from there, like I felt like I like tore something. Yeah. And then from then on, it, just, it was like sore every time I would work out and stuff. And then maybe a year later, I was messing around with my friends, trying to do a handstand and like, fell and like heard it again it was like the same feeling yeah <laughs> yeah and so now like you still play soccer a little bit <clears throat> yeah so I play um men's league so it's like every Sunday I know but soccer I mean, doesn't involve like catching yeah it doesn't really involve my shoulder as much so I'm usually fine but it's when I'm like working out lifting weights and stuff what about work? Like when you're sitting working on your projects, or I know you're doing a lot of uh, computer things because I've wanted you to help me with my website. <laughs> um, How do you sit? Yeah, in I mean, yeah, I'm sitting in a chair, usually like hunched over on my laptop, which is not good. <laughs> yeah, that's a perfect time. So I had yep. Kevin come into the clinic. I don't know, maybe two weeks ago, so I could look at his shoulder and talk about the show and uh, and all that jazz. And so he sat on the table, and I thought, hold on a second, let me go get my uh, let me get my phone. I think it's important to tell everybody. <laughs> I hate to harp on posture. I really do. It was one of the things I didn't like to talk about my first ten it's years. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's so important. Yeah, yeah, it's so important. So I said, let me take a picture and let's pull up. The first photo, that's the one right there. And so <laughs> I want everyone to look at that photo long and hard because you can see how his back is rounded, his shoulder, I mean, sorry, his ear is forward of his shoulder. Everything should be aligned and he should be straight up. And when I looked at under his shirt, I could see he had uh, some cupping marks on there. And what'd you tell me? You're like, oh yeah, cause my back hurts or something, right? Yep, I, my lower back's always sore. Yeah. And so you didn't have an injury, did you? On my back? Yeah. No, no, it's just always sore. So I had yeah. my girlfriend cup it, trying to relieve some pain. Yeah, 
It's good. It's good to do that. And I, uh, one of the things when I first saw you slouching was, and I tell everybody this, whether they have back pain or not, is when you when you round like that, all the pressure from your head and your shoulders and your thoracic spine and your organs go down onto your low back in that rounded position. And it's actually supposed to be, you know, a more of a, a, a reversed curve in the low back. So when you sit up straight, I should have put a picture, but I didn't. When you sit up straight, you get that nice lordosis in your back, which is a mild backwards curve. And all you have to do because sitting up straight can be exhausting for people if they're used to just slouching and hanging on the joints, hanging on the ligaments and the spine, which is why it hurts. It, it's the ligaments and everything that hurts. The muscles aren't doing much yeah. here. Uh, and so all you have to do is support it with a pillow or a fleece or a, anything, a t-shirt and only the good t-shirt, stuff it in your low back and scoot back. And it's okay to slouch, but just you have to do it the minimal part of your day. And I used to tell people when I was begging them to not slouch, like, hey, if you can sit up like this properly for 51% of your day and be in the wrong position for 49%, then you're in, you're in the green, you're no longer in the red. So strain, you've just gone over the midway part where you're not, where strain is not winning. And then your pace yeah, yeah. Are, and then you remember more. So I, how have you been with your posture? Have you remembered to sit up straight? Yeah, actually, when I'm at work now, I try to, you know, stand straight when I'm driving to work. I, yeah. I always bring a jacket. I always actually do stuff like behind my back now. Great. And like, yeah, sitting at the table on my computer for sure. What did you notice? Did you notice any soreness or a different soreness while you're trying to sit up straight? Or did your pain go down? Like what, what happened while you were trying to get yourself into that? I'm mean, trying to keep it, keep my posture, made my back more sore, but wow. I know it's, I got to get used to it. Yeah. That's, training your muscles to keep it up, right? Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah. And not, not everybody feels more soreness, but it's one of the things that if I sit for a long time unsupported, my back muscles get sore too. So I need to remember to support myself. So I, I like people, I, when that happens to people, I like to tell them, and I, like, I wanted you to call that out if you were sore, is that it's okay. Now you're in the optimal position with gravity in the right line so your muscles can stabilize you and they haven't yeah. had that. Job. And so that will get better. And pretty soon yeah. you slouch, you'll be like, oh, that's sore. And then you sit up straight. And so there's <laughs> there's a transition and it's it's not it's not bad. So that's good that you're doing that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's so important now. I know a lot of my friends too, when we were doing the the foam roll thing. Yeah. None of us can do it. <laughs> <laughs> So that's right. So let's go to, um, before we get into it, let's go to the image number one, where I show some of your clothing, because I want people to see a better picture. Only the good. I love that. That's great images. Yeah. So it just shows some of the good items. And let's go to uh, now the first video, three, where we show the foam roll that Kevin's referring to that his friends couldn't. <laughs> Okay, so you want to stretch the chest, the pest, the pec muscles out because they can hold the shoulder forward. Okay, thank you. You want to put your hands out into the T position and get your shoulder blades out of the way, like pinch them down. Okay, good. So you're trying to stretch this. So when we were doing this earlier, you know, you kind of lean to the right, head to the right, and then lean, and you breathe to stretch this out. And then you go back to the other way, lean and breathe. But then the next one you do is angels. So go ahead and do your snow angels. So you start in the T position. And then you do angels over. And Kevin was having a hard time before we stretched this. This was coming up too high. So relax for a second. So I just went in and I released the pec minor and here to loosen it up. And then we did it again and it looked kind of like you just saw right now. It was more even side to side. But one of the other things you also want to watch for is down here. I don't know if you can see this. His, I can put my arm under this. <laughs> So he's cheating with his big spine to try to get his shoulder over his head. So now bring your arms back down. So you want to make sure you anchor your rib cage down so I can't jam my fingers under there and then do the thing again. And so it doesn't go as far, but that's just the way if you tend to slouch or you don't sit up straight, your shoulder can only go this high until you use your spine to get up here. So he's using his spine to get that last little bit. So that's number one. <laughs> so I have to applaud you for having your friends try that because one of my big missions with doing the show with the content I put out there, my suck it in book, all the things that I want to do in the next year is because I want people to be more aware of these things because there's so much 
pain that we experience that's not necessary. Did your friends have any pain or are they like taking it on? <laughs> um, I'm not too sure if they have like any pain, but yeah, I mean, they couldn't, when they try to put the elbows down, they couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So let's go to the uh, next video where we show trying to put the elbows down. Oh yeah. So I also like to do external rotation at that as well to release the pec. So go ahead and externally rotate your arms. You got your elbows on the side, throw your thumbs back and try to touch the floor. So you can see that this is up again. So it's just the spine cheating. So we're gonna come back to the start position, bring those ribs down and keep your upper back onto the foam roll and then you rotate again. And you can see it doesn't go as far and that's just because the pec muscles that are holding the rib to the shoulder blade are too short and it's usually because you're you're slouched forward and even if you're not slouched forward everything that we do is in front of us so you want to keep your ribs down and then you rotate back and squeeze that inhibits the pec muscle then you come up and you just do it repeatedly and then you rotate back and you come up and pretty soon you'll be no time in the floor like me <laughs> None of these that's the one that you were talking about. So uh, yeah. did you show them any stretches to do or what was their reaction? Um, they were surprised because Noelle, my girlfriend, can actually do it. <laughs> so they thought it would be easy. <laughs> <laughs> and when they tried, yeah, they saw that it's actually really hard. That's good that she had the demo. You know, I tell her all the time when I, she works in, in our office. I tell her every time I walk by, I said, wow, Noelle, look at your posture. It's so good. And she always says, really? It, because she's not sure if she's doing it right because she's trying to do it right. But she looks yeah. perfect every time I walk in the main area to grab something. I see her. I'm like, God, look at that posture. It's so good. And that kind of goes to show you, you can, you can achieve not having these tight muscles when you're not slouching. Because when you do slouch, for people who haven't seen the show before, the pec minor in the front that attaches from your shoulder blade that's in the back running yeah. to your ribs, it can be short and it holds you down like this. Then you go to reach your arms out and your ribs won't move back. That's why you saw Kevin flare the bottom part of his back. And I could put my whole, I remember I could put my whole arm yep. under there. Yeah. It's because of your t-shirt. But then I went, woo, when I stuck it under there, it was, it was easy. So have you been stretching and is, is it, are you able to keep your ribs down more now? Oh yeah, for sure. I've been yeah. trying to do like everything. Yeah. It must maybe like a couple of days, but I feel like doing that um, foam roll exercise, I feel like I'm getting progress. I feel like my arms are getting closer to the ground. Yeah, that's great. That's closer to normal. That's closer to proper. Yeah. So if you don't have a foam roll, because I know a lot of people don't have a foam roll, and some people are older and it's not safe to get down on a foam roll because of their spine, maybe they have osteoporosis or they're just aging and it's too stiff. Yeah, let's go to the next video where you can uh, see how to stretch in a doorway. Everybody has a doorway. Okay, so you're going to put your arms wide, like in the T position with one foot in front of the other. And then you're going to bend the front leg, lift your chest and take a rapid inhale and go and breathe in and then exhale and release. And then you do it again. Use the back foot to push yourself through the door, lift your chest and breathe in. And that is another way in standing to open up your chest muscles. So if you're at your desk all day and you're tight, get up every 30 minutes, do a couple of these chest stretches and save your shoulder and your back. This is one of my favorite stretches. I've had five shoulder surgeries because I grew too fast when I was probably like 10 or 11 years old. So I was 5'11 by the time I was 12. And then I played every sport in high school. And then in college, I played a couple sports. So I dislocated and sprained everything. And uh, that's one of my favorite stretches to not harm the shoulder. Um, there's many ways to stretch in the doorway, but where I feel like people go wrong is they let the arms go down here and then the shoulder goes forward like that. The reason why I show the T here is because it keeps the shoulder stable. You're not gonna strain the shoulder. You're just gonna stretch this pec muscle right here. And yeah. so it's important also to put, you know, one foot in front of the other, like I was showing you, because I don't want you to hang on your chest muscles either. I want you to have the foot there so you can take the load and then lean forward only to where you stretch to get the pec. Now you have a labral tear. Did that bother your shoulder at all to do that stretch or were you okay? Um, a little bit. Doing yeah. all the exercises actually, yeah. 
Yeah, so the labrum is a little cup that holds the ball in the socket. And so uh, Kevin has a tear in, in the front there, the upper part. And so a lot of this uh, stretches and exercises that we've done for him is to try to help him. You know, when he slouches the ball of the socket, the ball of the shoulder goes forward on the socket and that puts more pressure where the tear is. So his bicep tendon has to work harder to hold the ball on the socket, similar to like a golf ball would be sitting on the tee. And if you pushed it forward, it'd be sitting on the edge and probably roll off. But we have a bicep tendon that holds it on and we have a labral that holds a labrum that holds it on. So when the labrum is torn, the ball can move more forward. So we want to get him back into that perfect ear over your shoulder position so that he doesn't put strain on the area of his tear. And oftentimes when you're doing some of these things, you feel the path of least resistance, which is, oh, my pecs are tight, so my shoulder's going forward. So I'm glad you're doing them. And it's okay to take a couple of days off. Uh, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, and yeah. what about strengthening? Are you doing some of the strengthening? Yeah, that too, yeah. yeah. That's good. So let's, uh, let's look at the next video where we show some scapular strengthening, the shoulder blade strengthening. This is the eye, you wanna squeeze your shoulder blades first and then pull your hands back just to your body but not behind. Now try the T this way. Same thing, squeeze your shoulder blades, pull back, is there pain? Oh. Perfect. He's doing it perfectly, you wanna just pull it to here and not back here because you don't wanna strain the front of your shoulder. So this is perfect for him. And now the W, you just pull back, like stick him up. Pick him up. Yeah, that's perfect. Does it hurt? Cool. Yeah, that's good. The scapula is the quarterback of the shoulder. Are you sucking it in? Yeah. You do? Suck him in. Good. All right, that looks good. I feel it clicking there. Okay, great. So these are some of the safest exercises for people to do. The shoulder blade is the quarterback of the shoulder joint. That's what I call it. I've been calling it that forever because I think of the quarterback as running the play. And when I played volleyball in college and high school, especially in college, we had this great set of setter, Kara. She runs the show. She calls what she's going to set and the hitters just run to where they're supposed to be. And she shoots the ball either into my hand or the outside hitter hand or the right side hitter's hand. And so you're just going for it, waiting to see what she's going to do. So I always say, you know, the setter is the quarterback in the volleyball game. The quarterback who runs the pass, runs the plays, like they're kind of in control of what's going on. And the shoulder blade is in control of what your shoulder does. And so if it is forward on your rib cage, like it is when we slouch, because I slouch too, I don't yeah. do it often, but if it's like that, it pushes the ball forward. And so those exercises I just showed you, are some of my favorites because you have to get the foundation. We need the quarterback to know what the heck's going on and be in the right place, knowing what he's got to do with the line. I don't even know football that well, but right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you've got your shoulder blade, you're working on your posture so that you can quarterback the show for your shoulder. So let's look at the next video, which works specifically on the rotator cuff, the small muscles. Go for it. <laughs> We'll do five of them, do two more. Okay, now straighten your arm out. Reach forward a little bit like you're punching forward. That gets the shoulder blade off the rib cage here and then raise towards the ceiling. Good, and then come down, just keep this forward. Yeah, that's it. To get that posterior scapula, posterior cuff at nine o'clock. Okay, let's try nose o'clock or like 10.30. Yeah, there you go. Now go up to the vertical. Good. Perfect. Should be no pain with this. Those exercises are some of the things that I have used over the years to keep my shoulder healthy so that I can do manual therapy on patients. And unfortunately in October, I did hurt myself doing some manual therapy on a patient, doing some joint mobilizations to a, a stiff spine. And so I have to do these um, pretty much every day. I can take maybe one or two days off. It just depends that if I'm having a good shoulder day, but every day I have to do some of these to stabilize because mine were joint capsule reconstructions. They weren't rotator cuff injuries. My joint capsule yeah. was so 
which they tightened it up similar to like the front of yours is, is part, part of the joint capsule. And not everybody has to do them every day, but I, I point out, you know, the shoulder blade and the posterior cuff because at nine o'clock being like shoulder height for a lefty, whereas three yeah. o'clock be shoulder height for me working on, on my right. Um, but those are kind of the ticket out of shoulder injury and pain is re-coordinating those being the smaller local stabilizing muscles and those shoulder blade exercises, the I's, the T's, the W's being the global shoulder uh, coordination muscles, the big guys. Yeah. Alignment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's look at the last video. This last video is an exercise that I kind of came up with for myself after I hurt my shoulder in October. And I, and I love it. It is a eccentric exercise, meaning a muscle is lengthening. And this muscle that we're going to be seeing in the next video is a power muscle. It pulls you forward when you're surfing. It pulls you down when you spike a volleyball. It pulls you down when you throw, and it pulls you down when you throw a baseball. That's the force muscle. Most people are stronger pulling in than pulling out, but I was doing eccentric lengthening of that muscle to help my shoulder and it made such a dramatic difference. So let's look at that last video. This one, it's important to retract your shoulder blade and push your shoulder blade back into the table while you let the weight slowly fall out. Oh, excellent. So that's the last exercise uh, that we're gonna show for the shoulder exercise. For you, Kevin, you're already doing them and anyone else that has shoulder pain, that's, we were using a four and a five pound weight because Kevin could do those without pain, but you might want to use a water bottle or nothing and you just go through the movement. It's so important to not have pain when you do rotator cuff strengthening. We want to make sure there's no pain. Pain is telling us that something is not in the right position or the ball maybe is further on the socket or you're using the wrong muscle. So I want everyone to know that, how important it is in posture, right, Kevin? Yes. <laughs> so great so as i'm sitting up straight and so is kevin thank you so much kevin for coming on and thanks everyone for tuning in please go to www.onlythegood.com or only the good clothing oh only the good clothing.com dot com and, yep and it's at only the good is that right at only the good clothing Okay, so sorry about that. Only the good clothing.com or only the good clothing on Instagram and get some of your great only the good because we all need to be reminded, yes, to pay more attention to only the good or in people that we're having a hard time with, see only the good because we all have good and life is better when you listen to your physical therapist. Aloha, everyone, and thank you, Kevin. Thank you.